Hello, and welcome to the 2-Bit Game Club. I'm your host, Liam Gallagher. This is our fourth Let's Play of Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town. Here you can see our, our hero, Steve Zahn, playing with his dog, Domville, on um, Sea Walk and Farm. All these names, of course, were picked uh, by contest winners of our naming contest. We've still yet to name our horse. But here we are on the farm, and it's rainy day, so we've saved ourselves a lot of work there by not having to water our fields. So we're still very f in the very beginning of play here. The farm is new. Uh, bring up my map here. As you can see, there's still plenty of land left to be cultivated. Um, but that's how it goes. You see that there's uh, some helpful icons actually on this map. Uh, you see the honey there over on the side. Some uh, displays that tell you what we're growing. So you've got cucumbers and potatoes. So that's a handy little bit of UI happening right there. Uh, even though graphically this game is simple and it's being run on the Game Boy Advance uh, uh, handheld, uh, there's still a lot of uh, graphic design detail that has been packed into this thing. Um, so one of the ways that this game works is it, it doesn't like it too much if uh, you are working too hard while it rains your character will get sick. So we're gonna try to avoid doing that kind of outdoors labor today and we're gonna focus on doing some other kinds of things. <clears throat> oh, each goddess. No, we don't want to talk to the GameCube. Um, so, one of the reasons why we're playing uh, Harvest Moon Friends of the Middle of Town is because, well, speaking on uh, Harvest Moon games generally, this is thought of as being one of the best by critics. Um, but, uh, in the grand scheme of... Oh, did we just pass something on the road there? Nope, just caught my eye. Um that this game offers uh, a sort of a different niche in gameplay than a lot of uh, the games that we've been playing so far in the Chubby Game Club over the last, uh, oh, what was it, five months now? Um, and uh, instead offers players a sort of a more relaxed and subdued gaming experience. Um, so because here on the Chubby Game Club we are uh, very interested in... Uh, game design and the history of game design and all the different arts and disciplines that create video games, I think it's worthwhile exploring a style of play that is uh, sort of outside the faster pace. So one of the things that's uh, kind of interesting about playing one of these games for a let's play is that it's kind of slow paced and allows a lot of time for introspection and just like relaxation where a lot of times I, I think I think of the let's play genre um, being one that's uh, based around like action type experiences and a lot of like creative mode type games like Minecraft is a big one there where the main draw is either the personalities of the host of course um, but rather, you know, just getting to participate in somebody else's, like, creative process. Um, and while this game definitely has uh, an element of authorship in it, in its play, in terms of, like, what things you, you know, plant and how you take care of your farm and what areas you emphasize, um, it doesn't really have, like, the creativity element or, like, the action-packed element that gives you like energetic exciting videos but rather this is just about like the calm and peaceful existence of rural life on a farm so maybe we can think about today some of the ways in which uh, that is brought out um, so immediately one of the things that strikes me is uh, just listening to the quiet patter of rain in the backdrop and how uh, how well planned that sound cue is. So let's just listen, because you hear it even when you're indoors. So it's pretty much just white noise. 
Um, but it's an interesting consideration in music. Um, and and this is a bit like music design rather than just like composition. But to think about what moments in a game you actually want to punctuate with music because music tends to be a pretty intellectually engaging thing, right? Like, the, it's the nature of the human mind that you can't really not listen to music if it's playing. You know, uh, if you work in a noisy place or you're always around music or whatnot, you have the, you develop the uh, ability to sort of like drown it out, to not necessarily have to hear it on the forefront of your mind. But just given the way that your hearing works, you're always hearing the music and your brain is taking up a little bit of a space in order to you know, hear the musical phrases with the rhythmic ideas and like turn them into meaning. Um, but you don't really get that with just like the pattern of rain. Oh gray. You feel so put upon. So, we can afford to upgrade a tool, I think. Okay, we're going to have to go mining them. That'll be our job for today, is to try to upgrade, um, I think our watering can is the thing that's chewing up most of our time, day by day. Trying to get those nine little field plots watered all in a row. Hey, Donville, get away from one box. Oh, we already have them. Here, that's fine. Okay. So we're going to go to the mine by the spring. Donville, no, don't go outside. It's raining. You'll get sick. Yeah, that rain sound is very peaceful and relaxing. There's a, it's it's at a nice low level in the mix, so it's not too loud compared to the rest of the gameplay. So it does, it's not demanding your attention just by sheer volume. Um, it's very white noise. It has enough like peaks and valleys to have a clear contour to give you something to like tune to, but it's not so dramatic in any one direction um, that that particular change will draw your attention. It's sort of like the optimal level of boring, if that makes sense. It's interesting to be thinking about a video game and talking talking about optimum boredom. But uh, we did just mine up some silver. That's pretty exciting. It's not every day that you find silver ore just with a hammer. <laughs> oh, video game mining. Let's do it. Thousand, take one day, let's do it. We'll be ready to pick up tomorrow when it's not raining anymore. And then we will use the rest of our money to um, buy some seeds. I want to get into uh, the chicken game soon, but we don't quite have enough money to put. We can get the chickens, but then not necessarily afford the feed after the fact. So we're going to get a bit of a nest egg going. You know what I mean? Wow. That is actually really embarrassing. I feel bad for Mana. First because of her name. Yeah. That's actually like legitimately sad. Hi, Sasha. Karen doesn't like me that much, I think. Oh, Mom, don't buy too much. Yeah, 
No, I'm not. You literally can't cook anything without it. <laughs> it's easier for you to say Jeff. Okay, there's still plenty of days left in spring, so we're gonna go. We're gonna go oat on the cucumbers. Try to make some money, because uh, cucumbers, unlike uh, potatoes and whatnot, you can harvest them multiple times, and you just keep pulling them off the vines. Um, so those types of crops are good to get in as soon as possible. There does come a point where they're no, not sensible to plant anymore. I think they grow five. They take five days to grow. Um, so approaching that, um, it's better to plant the crops that grow in a shorter period of time in order to make sure you actually get them out of the ground in time for the change of seasons. But um, we don't have that problem quite yet because it's still early. And these are the um, these are the kind of choices in Harvest Moon that I think make it, make it such a relaxing and lighthearted experience, right? Because you're not worrying about some guy shooting you in the head from a helicopter or whatnot. You know, the cho kind of choices that you're making in-game are like, mm, do I feel like growing cucumbers? Or do I feel like growing potatoes? What would I like to grow more? I guess I could be scything this, but whatever. Do we even have the scythe? I do not. I can't even say that. It's fine. Right? That's fine. It's all fine. Everything's going to be okay. You know, I spilled some seeds before, and that was sad. But, you know... It'll be okay. I'll make it. And you find some money in the ground while you're while you're hoeing the hoeing the earth, and that's nice. But if you don't find money, you'll still get by. All right, we learned our lesson last time. I'm actually gonna manually go in the inventory to switch my items, just so we don't lose our our concombras because they were con expensive bras. So you can find 2 Game Club online at 2BitGameClub.com and that's a good place to go check out our past podcast episodes and Let's Play videos. We've done a lot of cool games, including ActRaiser and Deus Ex, the original Deus Ex, and also the original ActRaiser, I suppose. Um, and we also have played um, Metal Gear Solid for the PlayStation, and we've played... Um, the Longest Journey, which is a point-and-click adventure game by Norwegian developer Funcom. And now we've moved on to uh, here. 8 p.m. There was a dinging noise. I guess it's nighttime. I haven't heard that yet. But um, and I forget the name of the publisher for this game, but I know it was developed uh, by their Tokyo division. I remember the I forget the name of the publisher, but it's like. Blank, blank, Tokyo Division. Um, okay. So we're almost at time for today, and it's raining. So what's one more thing that we can do that would be nice? Did we get our honey? There we go. Forget how much honey is worth. I've got a lot of... Like, i got my farmer's almanac. It's keeping track of all my odds and ends. Here's the sea walking farm property. Here's our tool upgrade list. Here's our earnings report. Which day of the month we earned what on and how much. Our income versus expenses, right? Generally speaking, we have slightly more in than we have coming out. These are all important things. If you're trying to run a farm. Here's how the harvest sprites feel about us. And then beyond earnings, there's also the memo pad, which just keeps track of random miscell miscell miscellanea. So we sold three silver. No wool, though. Here are records for the various mini games, as well as the, I guess, the dog frisbee throwing contest, which is probably somewhere in the year. The highest that we've earned in a day. The highest that we spent. What well, we fished, which is nothing. And here's our shipping memos again. All right. We 
You can get to the fire map other ways, but there's another way to do it. The world map, a diary. Oh, I guess you can save it any time. I didn't know that. There we go. That dog yowling sound effect always makes me a little uncomfortable because it sounds like a dog being kicked. But here we are. Let's do a little more work. If our guy gets tired again, well, it's nine, ten. We don't want him to get sick because we didn't eat any extra food today either. So let's turn it in. Have a good night, Donville. Well, it's sunny out today. We can hear the birds chirping. I wonder what kind of birds they are. We haven't used our TV yet. Eh, we might as well. Nice. Can we get a good weather tomorrow? So I guess you can look at all of the books that are in the library here, which is kind of funny. I guess there aren't that many books in the town library. But we're up here at the crack of dawn. It's 6 a.m. We can't do any watering quite yet because our, our watering can is at the blacksmith shop. Uh, I forget when it opens. That should have been something I checked um, at the time. But we can do some planting. Let's do that. Let's throw some cucumbers down there. And uh, we need to. I think we need to hoe up one more, uh, one more plot. So I'm gonna do the smart thing and go into my rucksack so as not to waste the cucumbers. And then after we've got um, a bigger plot going, it should be much easier to. Um, ooh. Much easier to water the garden with uh, our new watering upgrade, upgraded watering can. So the other thing that um, Harvest Moon does a really good job of is giving you um, both types of goals, or not both types, but in terms of the timing of goals, uh, both long and short term uh, things to shoot for. So the idea of getting your watering can is pretty tangible because it doesn't cost that much and it uses a resource that is readily available. Uh, but then you have other long-term things, like get a herd of cattle. I love the sound cue for the town. It's locked. So we gotta come back in an hour. I'm sure we can get more done. Mm, I don't want to use too much of my energy, um, so I want to save it for watering because I'm worried that this guy might get tuckered out too quick. So we're going to go make an art offering to the Harvest Goddess. We'll eat some bamboo sprouts as well. Um, so why am I making offers to the Harvest Goddess? Uh, well one, I think it's fun. Yeah, very important. There's no sense in wasting. Um, so, in this game, you can marry one of the girls in the village, which I, I think we're gonna aim to do. There's no there's no reason to play a solid character. Um, but you can also uh, marry the Harvest Goddess, which to me feels like a gimme. <laughs> if there's a magical woman who lives in a pond, then uh, that's the woman you court. <laughs> Um, so, the more offerings you give her that uh, she likes, the sooner, I suppose, you'll get to the point where uh, she's willing to marry you, because she likes you so much. Uh, but she apparently is in love with the GameCube most of all right now. And we're going to grab these blue herbs. Since we're, oh, we're going to eat them, I mistake. Alright, let's go get that watering can. So the 2-Bit Game Club is also uh, on YouTube and Twitch, depending upon which you're viewing this on. If you're in the live stream right now, Twitch, if you're uh, viewing it on YouTube right now, you're viewing it on YouTube. But it's uh, slash 2-Bit Game Club with the number 2. Oh, cutscene. Dramatic moment. 
<laughs> Ouch! I think Gray was distracted by something. Ooh, she's got tender touch. <laughs> oh man. I wonder what UMA stands for. Oh, look at that wry smile. Sparks are flying. You're not going to give me the tool now, are you? Uh, that news for your grandma. Or the grandpa. I think it'd be grandma. It's weird, it's a bit of a tip off, though. <laughs> give me my tool. Get back to work. Nice. So it has way more water power. Hey, that's not a bad goal there, uh, Greg. You work hard, and I'm sure your grandpaps will appreciate it. And uh, in the interim, the work will have been worthwhile in and of itself. Alright, let's do some watering. Oh, so much easier. Look at the length of a stroke. Oh, I'm getting so much water. I'll probably go through water in the can faster, too. So I believe that this takes as much energy to do three now as before we would spend uh, doing just one. Which is ideal. Because it means we can get our moons harvested faster. That's a pun. Um, so we still can't do the metal ones because we cannot reach. But uh, later upgrades of the watering can, we'll be able to do that. As well as you'll see soon that I'm going to be making friends with the uh, harvest sprites. And you get free labor off of them. Because I think they don't understand economics or something. Um, but they're very handy because they actually water crops with magic instead of with uh, human arms. Uh, they can get into the metal square. Uh, offering you that benefit way before you get the upgraded enough version of the watering can to get that middle square. So it's a hard to reach spot, right? It's like having an itchy back. So it looks like Steve Zahn has got what it takes to uh, water the entire garden. Um, I've had it explained to me who Steve Zahn is. Uh, I guess he's a voice actor and a normal actor as well and maybe a comedian if I recall correctly but um, I hadn't seen any of the things he was in which I don't know it probably says more bad about me than him right because he's the one who's actually been in films it's hard for me to criticize him based on me not having seen the thing he was in um, but there we are all right I'm saying we we're we doing a money not bad. We need, we need a crop of cucumbers is really what we need. So I think we're going to go into town and we're going to see if we can either give some of our Harvest White friends um, some weeds. Because really what we need to do is uh, free up some of our time. So you, I haven't talked about it, but you've noticed that I've been giving the appropriately colored weeds to the Harvest Gods, the Harvest Gods, Harvest Sprites, because they like the weeds of their colors. Uh, which I suppose makes sense. I mean, if I was going to like any weed at all, it might as well be one that looks like my favorite color. I guess that's like the how flowers work in general, and just like giving them to people, is they like flowers of the colors that they like. Um, I suppose there's also like the arrangement and the delicateness of the petals, but uh, <laughs> I've always been more of a vegetable gardener myself. Locked. Oh well, we'll just have to eat it. Oh, um, can we go to church 
Over to the home. Lock the church. The uh, first horse race festival is coming up soon. Can we get to the bar in time? The bar closes early. I don't know if it's because the people of Mineral Town just drink really hard and heavy so that they don't need to be up late. Come on, guys, talk to me. Oh no, they're like. they've merged. I wanna to talk to Cliff, is his name? Rick? Oh, whatever. So I think they close at 8. Which is kinda of funny. I don't know when the empty lot closes. It's a blacksmith. Oh, I went down the wrong road. Oh, whatever. We'll go booze in some other night. The game is set up in such a way that your character actually is unable to drink the booze at the bar. Which is kind of funny. Because they do still have the bar. This does not make sense to me. Oh, well. Alright, we're going to turn it in. And that's going to be the end of this episode of the 2-Bit Game Club's Let's Play of... Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town. I've been your host, Liam Gallagher. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, check back into the next episode to see how the farm continues to develop in the shadow of the hill over Mineral Town.